Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from the YouTube channel Red Lessons. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate your viewership. It means a lot to me. And in today's episode, let's go ahead and take a closer look at one of the newest fragrances by the company Dua Fragrances. And this one is called Lush Sapphire. So stay tuned. fragrance was released in 2019, so it is one of the most recent ones to have come out. Um, they're always putting out a ton of fragrances. I want to say it's like four or five fragrances every month or so, so there's always something new. And this one, full disclosure, I looked it up on the website, I looked at the original, um, I looked at how expensive it was, and so I actually reached out to um, Assam and he sent me this bottle. And so this one was sent to me. Uh, for review, so I just wanted to let you guys know that in case you feel as though I cannot remain unbiased while I shoot this video. And so this one is called Lush Sapphire, and it is inspired by a fragrance by Botticella de Victorious called Green Sapphire. And so I was reading up on a lot of the notes, the uh, cashmere musk, the raspberry, the vanilla, the patchouli, the resins, and I thought to myself, wow, this sounds like a really great fragrance for this time of the year and since they've updated their presentation I kind of wanted to have at least one bottle with the new presentation in my collection and of course he always obliges and he was very happy to send this to me. So for those of you who don't know Dual Fragrances is a company that makes clones of more popular fragrances out there. So you have companies like Parfum Vintage and Alexandria and Zara and there's just a ton of clone companies out there and all of them produce really great work and I remember um, you know initially discovering Dua fragrances when they were like cloning some of the more high-end hard to find fragrances on the market and so like they'll have fragrances that were you know Harrods exclusives or Selfridges exclusives and so they're kind of like the only ones that are um, cloning like these really really high-end fragrances and sure enough this one I don't think this one is an exclusive but I know it retails for $885 and with a promotion they're always running promotions uh, you can pretty much get this one in the vein of like $45 $50 or something like that and so I do think it's a really good deal as long as you know you feel as though they got it close enough to the original and so of course I'm gonna be telling you a little bit of that I have had an opportunity to try the original I'm excited to tell you what I think of the smell. Let's start things off with the presentation. So here we have the presentation for Lush Sapphire. Let me go ahead and put the bottle down because this is the first Dua review that I'm doing where I actually have a box on hand. Thank you so much for the upgrade. I think this looks really cool. Uh, you kind of have like this uh, reflective box on the front here. It opens up as such. On the inside of the box, there's a little description on the company and what they do. If you're interested in reading that, feel free to pause your screen. On the side, it says Extrait de Parfum, kind of like a, the spine of a book. And then on the back, it has the ingredients with the dual logo at the very top. Actually, pretty simple presentation, but it's nice that you have a box that protects the bottle, right? So here is the bottle. So it's called Lush Sapphire, just has this sort of reflective uh, pearlescent um, presentation to it. It's just a sticker. It says Lush Sapphire on the side. It says Extrait de Parfum on the back. Uh, the cap clicks into place very nicely. You can pick this one up from the cap if you want. And the distribution on the atomizer is nice and wide. Let's go ahead and continue with the smell. So the first thing that I want to get out of the way is does this smell close to the fragrance from which it's inspired? Uh, in my humble opinion, Yes, it does. It smells very, very close to it, but not initially. And so the one note that I was really on the lookout here, which is one of the most concentrated notes, according to user votes online, is a note of raspberry. And of course, I've tried a lot of other raspberry or berry heavy scents, uh, one of them being Gucci Guilty um, Oud, another one being um, a Nishan Istanbul fragrance called Vain and Naive. And so I'm kind of a fan of the way that berry is utilized in a lot of fragrances. Jubilation 25 by Amouage being another one. And I remember the, the raspberry note wasn't as strong in this one as it is in the original fragrance. And so it wasn't, it didn't come across as strongly. And so 
when I sprayed this on, I think initially I thought to myself, okay, I think it's going in a different direction. As it settled down, uh, the original dried down to this sort of like dark green vetiver like base. And I'll tell you what it reminds me of in a little bit. Whereas this fragrance, I feel like although it wasn't as loud in the opening, it actually sustained itself. So it was kind of like you got a carbon copy of the opening that worked very well into the mid and the base. And the longevity on this one is super scary because it lasts for a very, very long time. I've actually had this in my possession now for two weeks, three weeks, something like that. And I've been smelling the same dry down strip, which I sprayed once or twice. And I think you can kind of tell how the oil has affected it a little bit. And yeah, it is still going strong. I mean, full disclosure, I did respray it today prior to uh, today's you know, review, but I've also been wearing this fragrance a lot over the past couple of weeks. I wore it to work maybe twice, and the other few times that I did wear it, I wore it around the house because truth be told, I was like, man, this fragrance is so strong, and it's certainly one of the more artistic, creative fragrances, so not really something that I would wear in like a high, not something that I would over apply with and not, not something that I would wear around kids. So I'm a teacher basically. And so this is not something that I would like dr drown myself in or anything like that. But so this one, it opens up with that lush and I think the name is actually quite fitting for this one. It opens up with a very lush raspberry note in the opening. Like I said, I didn't get it as strong as I do in the original, but it does last for a very, very long time. And at one point in the progression, they actually do end up smelling the same. I would say about a 95% similarity. And then when it dries down, I get this vetiver note. I don't even know if vetiver is listed as a note. I don't think it is. I know patchouli is. But I get a vetiver note in there that was actually quite similar to like Ancre Noir. And so it's kind of like Ancre Noir, uh, Chanel Sycamore. I know there's an aroma chem responsible for that. I think it's called Vetichex or something like that. And uh, it's something that I acquired a while back from creatingperfume.com. Uh, and... I smell it so strongly in this one. And I'm like, oh, this smells like a dirty vetiver. This fragrance is a dirty vetiver, but it's so much more complex than that. You have the vanilla, you have the patchouli that's working in the base, you have the musk. And again, that daring quality might actually be coming from the vetiver, but all in all, this is a really, really intriguing scent. I love how it's kind of like a play off of Chanel Sycamore or Ancre Noir in the sense that it's not just that rugged vetiver, but you have this velvety sweetness from the raspberry note up on top. It kind of adds a little bit of color to the composition. It's really, really well done. I would actually wear this now before I wear Ancre Noir. I would wear this before I wear Sycamore. In my opinion, I think both of those fragrances are masterpieces, but there's just something about this one. There's that added layer, that added overtone that just makes it so exciting. And it's really, really well done. And so I'm actually quite happy that they cloned this. I'm happy that I am able to experience this fragrance. It's really difficult, even for someone, you know, in my position, owning as many fragrances as I do, it's really hard for me to drop $1,000 on a bottle of cologne. It's just, I'm sorry, um, Eau de Parfum, Extrait de Parfum, whatever you wanna call it, it's really difficult for me. That is a lot of money. I have a daughter that I have to put through daycare. And so uh, this one is an awesome, awesome uh, iteration of the other one that I mentioned previously. And if you guys have a chance to get a sample, I know Dua doesn't do samples, uh, but I think it smells in suds or something like that. I'm gonna leave a link down below, but I know there is a website from which you can purchase uh, samples. Not sure if they have this one, but Definitely, I always recommend sampling, you know, don't blind buy, although, you know, you can take my word for it. This is an awesome scent, but it is a very strong scent. So this is one that you have to wear with caution. Let's finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I do find it to be kind of a unique scent. And of course, I'm talking about the original Bodice the Victoria scent. I don't think the Dua is original in any sense of the word, right? This is quite literally a clone of someone else's creation. Um, but I do think that given, you know, the 95% similarity, there isn't much originality here. But in terms of this scent profile being original to other fragrances that I've smelled on the market, um, not quite in the regard that it does kind of smell like Ancre Noir with like that rugged vetiver. Of course, it's done and ornamented in so many other different ways. And so it's one that I would recommend trying out. But, you know, it does kind of have that rough and tumble vetiver approach that I get from a lot of other fragrances. And the overall smell on this one 
is incredibly intriguing. Uh, if you are a fan of niche fragrances of artisanal quality, you are going to love the way that this one smells. However, the only downside to that would be, you know, it's easy to over apply. And so um, you just have to be careful who you're around and you have to be careful of how much you put on because it is extract the parfum strength. In terms of the longevity, 12 plus hours. This stuff lasts a very, very long time. Definitely not something that I can say about all Dua fragrances. Um, I know their Bergamot 22 clone. I got good longevity, but it wasn't like monstrous. I remember their, uh, their pure white cologne clone. Again, good longevity, but it's not something that lasted, you know, 12 hours or anything like that, but this one does. And so the longevity on this one is super, super strong. The projection, equally as strong. I know it doesn't have a lot of volatile top notes, namely citrus, but it's still loud. When you spray it on, you can tell that you just sprayed something on and it will stick with you. The sillage on this one is very good too. If you walk into an elevator, it's gonna follow you into an elevator. Uh, it might even be the kind of fragrance to announce your presence before you step into the room. In terms of versatility, I don't think it's very versatile. So this is the downfall. I think this is one that might cater to a certain type of person, a certain individual. So this is definitely for the kind of swords, definitely for somebody who wants to challenge their nose and smell something a little bit more daring. Although, you know, given the ingredients that are in here, they're suitable for a wide range of people. But I guess the concentration in which they're done and also so that that rugged quality that I get from this one, I don't think everybody is going to love it. But if you are a fan of some of the more niche level fragrances, you're going to love this one. Honestly, um, I think this one is best worn when it's really, really cold outside. I wouldn't wear this one in the spring. I wouldn't wear it in the fall. Uh, um, I'm sorry, in the summer, but I would wear it in the fall and in the winter when it's really brisk outside. I think this one is perfectly unisex. Anybody of any uh, you know, sex can wear this one. Um, I just think that it will cater to a particular nose. And last up in terms of presentation, I really like the step up uh, that they have from, you know, their old presentation, which was the little sort of decan looking bottles. And so these are actually quite nice. Uh, the crimped on uh, caps, I like that there's a box with it. It kind of makes me want to collect them that much more. And so my final verdict on this one is I love this smell, honestly. And it, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it reminds me of Sycamore by Chanel, the fact that it reminds me of Ancre Noir by Lalique, but it kind of takes that, uh, you know, olfactory profile and it enhances it in a few different ways by adding the vanilla warmth in the base, adding that musky undercurrent, but also that raspberry note in the top that is really luscious. And so all in all, very well done for a 90, 95% similarity. I think that this is a really solid scent. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Lush Sapphire by Dua Fragrances. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button in the corner. I am almost at 80,000 subscribers as of the time that I'm filming this video. So thank you guys so much for being one of those 80,000 subscribers. I can't tell you how much that means to me. I really love you guys for that. And if you are new to this channel, Please, uh, you know, thank you for finding this channel. I hope you enjoy your stay. Thank you for watching, guys. I love you. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.